is up you guys welcome back to another one if you were new to the channel i'm gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the new 2021 hyundai sonata n-line courtesy of jack g on volvo hyundai in york pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so i wanted to check this one out not only because i own a 2020 sonata but this is an all new trim for the 2021 model year and of course n line or n standing for nam yang which is hyundai's research and development facility in korea still comes with america's best warranty on this one which is five years sixty thousand mile bumper to bumper 10 year 100 000 miles on the powertrain and by the way i emphasize that because in the end line here this is more than just cosmetic upgrades there is quite a big increase in power in this thing as well we'll get into that of course and so three years complimentary maintenance as well so you don't have to pay for things like the oil changes and the tire rotation so that's always good so in this video i will be going over everything about the sonata end line we'll be testing out acceleration braking ride quality sound system exhaust clip all of that fun stuff so Having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so when it comes to the 2021 Sonata N-Line, MSRP will start at $33,200. And of course, there's a couple options you could tack on to that to increase the price a little bit. But nonetheless, powering this beast is going to be a 2.5 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder, which if that sounds familiar to you guys, that is the same engine that Genesis, Hyundai's performance luxury division puts in their gv80 as well as their g80 so that is where that engine comes from but nonetheless 290 horsepower 5800 rpm 311 pound feet of torque available from the power band of 1600 rpm to 4000 rpm power sent to the front wheels through an end specific wet dual clutch with paddle shifters but you guys know we will be testing out those paddle shifters in a little bit and i'm excited to see how quickly they're going to react with this wet dual clutch we have in the sonata n line here zero to 60 times Time comes in at approximately 5.3 seconds partly due because this one does come with launch control as well and i'll get into that a little bit more as well but if you were comparing that zero to 60 time to some of the competitors let's say the accord comes in at 5.7 camry comes in at 5.8 so Having said that, the Sonata N-Line is actually the best in class when it comes to that zero to 60 time release. So that's pretty cool. Then when it comes to the top speed in the N-Line, it actually comes in at 150 miles per hour, which is a bump from the standard Sonata as well. MPG number still coming in at a respectable 23 in the city, 33 on the highway. And so before we get into any kind of paddle shift or acceleration test, I did want to mention there are some driving modes, of course. That drive mode button is going to be located kind of directly behind the N logo, behind the the drive buttons there but those drive modes will include normal sport sport plus and custom adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response the steering sensitivity and the gauge cluster quite substantially as well so i thought that was pretty cool but overall let's go ahead and put this thing to the test let me find a straightaway and let's first start with testing out the paddle shifters which by the way do come with rev matching as well so when you're down shifting that's going to be a little extra fun there to keep the rpms up in the higher range it gives you a little extra power there but now let's go ahead and find that straight away and let's put these paddle shifters to the test all right first gear not shifting good yeah buddy wow Paddle shifters are quick, hallelujah. That was cool. Anyways, I'm used to the standard Sonata, which has kind of slow reactive paddle shifters to be quite honest, but dang, in the Sonata N-Line, those paddle shifters are dang quick. Love that, but anyways, let's go ahead and take it out of that paddle shifter mode. I'm just gonna hit the D. It's gonna give back full control to the Sonata N-Line and we got yet another straightaway. So let's go ahead now and test out the acceleration on this thing and see how well it grips when the weather is in the 20s here in Pennsylvania. Oh, oh, there it is. Dang. <laughs> this thing is dang quick. That was fun, man. This is a fun car. I got to be honest, there was a little bit of slippage. I will say that. Not much, though. So having said that, if this thing was all-wheel drive, it would be the perfect acceleration there. But a little bit of slippage, but quite surprised, honestly, because there are cars far worse than that. And there wasn't any torque steer either, because that is a lot of power being sent to the front wheels. You would expect a decent amount of torque steer, but really, there wasn't. That kind of surprised me. So very good grip actually for the amount of power being sent to the front wheels on this one so i am quite surprised but anyways 
to go along with that acceleration. As always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 13.6 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 12.8 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, actually comes in at 110 feet, which is dang impressive. Quite honestly, that number at least, and I could tell the second I started driving this thing, that was one of the things I immediately noticed. The braking feel instantly brings you to a stop. There's no brake pedal delay. It was a very nice braking feel to this thing. Not that the regular Sonata is bad, but a lot of times with sedans, you always are coming in in the 120, sometimes even 130 feet. So 110 feet is very impressive for this car. But anyways, now touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as that steering feel goes, it actually feels pretty good. I gotta be honest, there's maybe a little bit of understeer when you really hit the gas, when you're going around to the turn. And that's why I said maybe an all-wheel drive system would be the very best scenario for this car but having said that it is a much heavier steering field than the standard Sonata although it's not quite as heavy as I still would have wanted it but seeing as this is a performance or a sport sedan but nonetheless very nice steering feel to this one as far as ride quality goes it's not bad you can feel a little bit more of the road as expected in a car like this but I will say it is not bad so no issues for me when it comes to ride quality when it comes to cabin noise definitely very nice surprisingly and I say that way because whenever my Sonata hits maybe 50 miles per hour I get a little bit of wind noise coming in in the driver's side and I think that's something that a lot of Hyundais do unfortunately and that's something maybe they can work on but with this one I haven't got that so far in this drive so I really like that and that may be due in part partly because of the acoustic laminated front windshield and front door glass so that is going to absorb a lot of the exterior wind noises so it's going to prevent that from coming into the cabin so when it comes to cabin noise it's actually more on the luxury side of things which I really like no issues with that whatsoever the touching of visibility I can see perfectly fine out the back this is a sedan so you're really not going to have any issues with visibility so no issues there for me whatsoever. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and continue on to the exterior because there are so many changes to the end line specifically. We'll do the exhaust clip, which I have a feeling is gonna be amazing. So let's go ahead and find a cool spot in the woods here and let's go ahead and move on to the exterior of our brand new 2021 Hyundai Sonata end line. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2021 Hyundai Sonata N-Line finished in Hampton Gray. Definitely a nice color for the Sonata, but let's go ahead and start up front. There are some minor tweaks, comparatively speaking, to the uh, non-N-Line Sonata, I guess you could say. And so up front, you will get an N-specific front grille. As far as the design goes, there's also the N-badging or N-Line badging found in the upper corner there, you guys can see. Also, you're going to find an added front lip towards the bottom that is going to be specific to the N-Line as well. A little better aerodynamics there because of that front air curtains you guys can see that towards the sides helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination of course also to the sides led headlights coming with the automatic feature as well meaning when it starts to get dark out at night those headlights will turn on automatically for you there also automatic high beams do come standard and led daytime running lights also coming standard and one of the best parts about those led daytime running lights is i'll show you guys right here once they become parallel to the hood they kind of have this design in which they slowly fade out right into about where you guys can see the crease there so it is a pretty cool design and it's like nothing else on the road right now so that's part of the reason why i absolutely love that design but anyways i believe they call that the lasso design actually but much more aggressive front look overall to the end line specifically because of the grill and the added front lip in the front there but now let's go ahead and make our way to the side of the Sonata end line here. And so now since we are around to the side, chrome window surrounds do come standard gloss black window treatment. You guys can see that in the middle there. The gloss black window treatment actually does come on the SEL plus trim level of the regular Sonata, but otherwise you're going to get kind of a matte black window treatment if you go with any of the other trims. But I do like that they're gloss black on the end line and we'll say that also gloss black side mirrors to go along with that. And they are power adjustable heated side mirrors with LED integrated turd signals as well little change to the end line though of course you got the end line badging found on the front fender you guys can see that it's pretty cool up there gloss black side skirts to tie in together with all of the other gloss black accents of course and take a look down at the wheel setup they are 19 inch and specific alloy wheels with the double five spoke design kind of a charcoal silver look to them so it definitely has a very nice design in my opinion i actually really like them but anyways let's now go ahead and make our way to the back of the sonata end line 
on. All right, so since we are around back, gloss black shark fin antenna up top there, but just below that, one of the differences the end line adds once again, let me show you guys, this kind of integrated rear spoiler here that ties the two taillights together, it is gloss black on the end line. It is actually body colored on the standard Sonata. So I wanted to mention that to you guys. Sonata lettering spelled out horizontally. Of course, you also have LED taillights that do come standard on this one as well. And then towards the bottom, again, an end specific rear bumper is a lot more body colored accents with the regular Sonata, but a lot more gloss black accents, more aggressive look, I guess you could say, with the Sonata end line. But just below it all, perhaps what is going to be my favorite part i haven't heard it yet i can't wait to hear this video played back but dual exhaust outlets with quad satin chrome tips of course you guys know you get the single exhaust outlet with the dual tips with the regular sonata so quad tips is going to sound pretty cool i have a feeling but nonetheless i do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip All right, so now since we are around back of the Sonata M line, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, it is a hands-free smart trunk, which I absolutely love. That's what I have on my Sonata SEL Plus. Essentially, if the vehicle is locked, you can just walk up to the back of that trunk without unloading whatever you're holding. It is gonna beep three times and then automatically open up for you. So I love that feature, especially when I have my hands full of a tripod, a slider, backpack, all that stuff for my camera gear. So that's pretty cool. Also, a hidden entrance to the trunk within the Hyundai logo itself. That is another very cool way to go ahead and open that up, but also a button on the key fob. There is a button by the driver's side, left knee then as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at an even 16 cubic feet, which is a decent amount. Also, there's gonna be some of those levers back there so you can fold down those rear seats because there is a 60-40 split, giving it a little extra space then if you needed it. Then make your way up to the rear legroom that comes in at 34.8 inches, which is acceptable for reference. I mean, even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Not the most in its class, but it is acceptable. You'll get the job done, I guess you could say. Rear ventilation also coming standard. Just beneath that rear ventilation, you will find one USB charging port, which which is pretty cool. Rear center armrest with cup holders also coming standard. You will find seat back mat pockets then as well. But now let's go ahead and make our way up to the front seats. Napa leather Dynamica suede surfaces is going to come standard on this one with red contrast stitching. There will be eight way power adjustable driver's seat with power lumbar, six way adjustable passenger seat. Those front seats are going to be heated as well in case anybody is wondering no ventilated front seats unfortunately on the end line but you can get it on the limited if you wanted that sonata but anyways as far as the bolstering goes it's wonderful first thing i noticed when i first got in the sonata end line is how well these seats are bolstered you could easily take this thing quicker around the turns and feel completely comfortable that you will not move around whatsoever because these bolsters on this thing are quite thick so it's pretty cool it kind of like hugs you while you're driving i like it seats are plenty comfortable for me but now let's go ahead and take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping you do actually have your end logo towards the bottom of it that's pretty cool it is leather wrapped and so typically where you could find all of your chrome accents and your standard sonata you're going to kind of find a dark finish to the sonata end line so that's going to be found at the bottom portion of the steering wheel and it's found throughout this one and i'll get more into that later but also wanted to mention that dark finish is going to be found on the paddle shifters in the back of the steering wheel as well. So that's pretty cool. But overall, 10 and 2 grips are perfectly fine there. Now making our way to the startup, let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do, of course, have your Hyundai logo on the one side. When you flip it over, lock, unlock that button to pop the rear hatch. And there's actually a hold button for your remote start also coming standard. But also, there's several ways you can actually start this one up. There's the push button start found by the driver's right knee. It's going to be in that dark finish once again. There's also a digital key, and there's also kind of a key card. It looks like a credit card kind of shape, but it's not, of course, a credit card. But you can actually hold either the digital key, which is found on your smartphone, 
after you download the app, of course, up to the door handle. It's gonna unlock it and lock it for you. And then you can just put it on this NFC card slot, your phone that is, or the card itself. And that's gonna actually enable the vehicle to be started through the push button start. So technically don't have to carry around your key if you didn't want to, if you didn't want that in your pocket or whatever. So that's kind of a cool feature for that reason, in my personal opinion. So tons of ways to go ahead and start this Sonata end line up. But once started up, this is one of my favorite parts once again, 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster. It is different than the 2020 Sonata digital gauge cluster. It's kind of what all the 2021 Hyundais are looking like when it comes to the digital gauges at least. And as I said before, when you adjust the driving mode, let's say putting it in sport plus or sport driving mode, it's going to completely shift the look of those digital gauges. Kind of has this carbon fiber-ish look to the background of them and definitely a very cool look, including your miles per gallon that's gonna be high highlighted in red whereas it's highlighted in blue if you put on any other driving mode so that's pretty cool that you can adjust it that way but of course you can also adjust it by using the steering wheel mounted controls found on the right side of the steering wheel giving you things like your trip a trip b when you need your next oil change there's also your engine temp there's a cool little picture of the sonata for your safety features there's also going to be a compass up there and the list goes on so quite a bit you can check out within those digital gauges i absolutely love it on my 2020 sonata and this is no different i love it on this as well one of the coolest features about this car but checking out overall interior quality first thing i want to mention panoramic sunroof going all the way into the rear seats that is pretty darn cool home link controls for up to three different garage doors found just underneath of the rear view mirror there by the way that rear view mirror is an auto dimming rear view mirror so if somebody decides to put on their high beams or accidentally leave them on behind you it's automatically going to dim that so you don't have to be blinded while you're driving, which is always a good thing. Dual zoom climate control coming standard as well, so both driver and passenger can set their own temperatures. Just in front of the drive buttons, there is going to be a wireless phone charger, which works beautifully on the Sonata. We'll attest to that. Aluminum foot pedals also coming standard on this one. One of the best parts, 64 colors of ambient lighting coming standard on this one. Of course, you could also get that on the limited Sonata, but that's always a very cool feature. It looks dang cool at night, I will say that. We got blue on right now. I'm gonna try to show that to you guys because we're kind of hidden in the woods a little bit, but it's definitely pretty cool how you can adjust all of those different colors. But in addition to that, LED interior lighting found up top here as well for both in the front and the back. So I definitely like that as well. Overall, it's finished pretty much as expected. I like the red contrast stitching above the passenger side glove box and that red contrast stitching continues onto the doors as well. You have a lot of soft touch leather finishes to those doors. I also like that. Just in front of the shift buttons, there's a 12 volt power outlet, US, two USB charging ports actually. Of course, your wireless phone charger, like I was saying, just behind that, you have dual color cup holders and then another little slot to put your cell phone and what i like about the surrounding plastic around those dual cup holders hyundai could have left it as a boring matte gray but they actually added a nice little design to it so i do appreciate that on mine as well but also specific to the end line i almost forgot to mention this just behind the drive buttons there is an end logo so <laughs> Who would have thunk it on the end line? But also within the center armrest, there's a decent amount of space, no charging ports or anything in there, but decent amount of space nonetheless. But overall, definitely like the design to the interior. Honestly, it looks almost identical to my SEL Plus. Also, I forgot to mention the, um, the seats themselves also have the end logo towards the upper portion of the seats can't forget to mention that but so anyways the fun continues when it comes to the tech display and so 10 and a quarter inch color touchscreen display does come standard on the sonata n-line bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard android auto apple carplay as well factory navigation system also standard there's a voice memo system which i've always found pretty cool it saves your voice you could play it back at a later date so maybe you don't want to forget something i don't know it's a pretty cool feature though ambient lighting colors of course can be adjusted up there as well can of course check out your weather information up there and my personal favorite sounds of nature and so when you hit that sounds of nature button there is going to be a plethora of different sounds of nature of course including lively forest calm sea waves rainy day open air air cafe, warm fireplace, and snowy village. And so, as I always do with my Hyundai and Genesis videos, I'm going to let you guys take a brief listen to them because I think it's personally pretty cool. And I will be back in just a second. It 
And so of course, in addition to all of that, you can of course check out your radio settings up on that 10 and a quarter inch screen as well. And by the way, when it comes to the sound system specifically for the end line, you will find a 12 speaker Bose sound system. I'm so glad Hyundai didn't cut corners with that. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. The bass was definitely very apparent in that sound system. Plenty of bass, plenty of clarity. Honestly, that sound system was great. Light years better than the standard sound system found in the Sonata. That was really, really nice, I will say that. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that 10 and a quarter inch screen is when you do put the Sonata end line in reverse, you will find a rear view camera letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so first thing I wanted to mention when it comes to this one, IIHS top safety pick, which pretty much does it all right there. Quite honestly, front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver's knee airbag as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks in the back, tire pressure monitoring system as well. But that's all pretty boring at this point. What also comes standard across the board is going to be a forward collision avoidance assist system with pedestrian detection, lane keep assist, which is brilliant on the Sonata and Hyundais in general, lane following assist, driver attention warning system, adaptive cruise control with stop and go, which again is brilliant with this car, rear occupant alert, blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, which is gonna be the little car icons in the side mirrors, safe exit warning and highway drive assist as well which essentially is hyundai's level two autonomous driving system but when it comes to my final thoughts here of the sonata n line this is the fastest car 260 in its class that says something right there great braking on this one 60 to zero and 110 feet is quite brilliant if i'm being honest as far as the steering feel goes i wouldn't have minded a little bit heavier because a lot of other sports sedans a lot of other sports cars in general do have a heavier weight to the steering but having said that it is approved upon if you were comparing it to a standard sonata so i do like that but tons of standard safety on this one as well i love the adaptive cruise control system i'm sure highway driving assist feature is going to be just as good pretty darn good interior quality on this one as well although i wouldn't have minded maybe a different color maybe a lighter tan or something to the interior if somebody wanted to go that route but overall an extremely great value when it comes to the sonata n line if you're looking for something a bit more fun to drive but still yet just as practical with all of the safety features america's best warranty three years free maintenance this is it. This is why I own a Sonata. This is a brilliant car. I love my car. This car is just as good. Although it's a little bit more expensive than the one I got, but I still like it. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the Sonata N line in the comments section below. If you have any questions about my Sonata, put it in the comments section below yet again. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. Feel free to follow me on TikTok at the bottom of the screen if you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before I put it on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Anyways, do appreciate you guys watching. I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.